I have the Galaxy S23 here, and it has the new Android 15 update based on One UI 7. Today, I'll be showing you how to gain root access to this phone and any other Samsung Galaxy device that has this version of Android installed. There is a lot to take note of here, so please follow along carefully and you won't run into any issues at all. But as always, feel free to leave a comment down below if you end up having any questions about today's guide. Before we can begin though, we first need to have some things set up ahead of time. For example, you cannot root this phone or any other Samsung Galaxy device until you unlock its bootloader. This process is actually blocked on certain devices though, and it can be different depending on which phone or tablet you have. Sadly, you cannot root your Android smartphone using this method if your bootloader is currently locked. I also want to point out that unless you're updating from one rooted version of Android 14 to this rooted version of Android 15, you will end up needing to erase all of the data from your phone. So be sure that you back up your important stuff ahead of time. With that disclaimer out of the way, Windows users will need to download a program called Odin. Those of you with Linux can still follow along, but you'll need to use a program called Heimdall instead. Either way, I'll have download links and setup guides for these in the video description below. And I'll have those linked in the pinned comment here as well, so that it's easy for everyone to find. You're also going to need to download the same version of the firmware that you currently have installed on your phone. I use a website called SAMFW to get these firmware files, but there are a number of tools and trusted sources out there. Some people like to use a program called Freya, while others prefer to use a reputable website like SAM Mobile. Either way, you need to make sure that the firmware is for the same region that matches the region code for your specific device. My phone here has the TPA region code for Panama. So when I download the Android 15 firmware for this specific device, not only do I need to make sure that I'm downloading the TPA version, but I also want to match the build number that you see here and make sure it matches the exact firmware that you're downloading. You'll be able to find this software information page from within the settings application. Just dive into the about phone section from there. When you download the firmware, it needs to be stored on your PC and then you need to extract the contents of that file. Then, you're going to want to move a file that begins with the letters AP. And you're going to need to copy that file from the PC over to your Samsung Galaxy device. So after you download that firmware and after you have extracted it, look at the file names, grab the file that begins with the letters AP, and copy it to our phone. And lastly, before we can actually root this device, we need to install the latest version of Majisk. So be sure that you're downloading this from the official GitHub page and not a third-party hosted website. And I'll have the link to that GitHub page down below as well. So download that APK file for Majisk and install it on your device. With Majisk installed, we can root Samsung Galaxy One UI 7 devices by opening up the Majisk application, and then you're gonna to want to tap on the install button from within the top card here. Now, you're going to choose the select and patch a file option, and that's gonna take you to a file browser. So let's browse through your internal storage 
and then select the firmware file that begins with the letters AP. We're going to tap on Let's Go, and that's going to tell Magisk to patch the file. So after a little bit of waiting, the application will extract the contents, inject the Magisk binaries into the correct image files, and then it's going to package everything back up for us. After we wait, we're going to get a file labeled Magisk underscore patched with some letters and numbers after it. It's going to be put in our downloads folder, so make note of that. And we're going to want to copy this newly created file back to the PC so that we can flash it with Odin or Heimdall. After we have copied that patched file from the phone to our PC, we need to boot our Samsung Galaxy device into download mode. And this process will be a little bit different depending on which phone you have. For my Galaxy S23, and I recommend you try the same, you're going to power off the device, press and hold both the volume up and the volume down buttons. We're going to hold those two buttons down at the same time. And while we're holding those buttons down, we connect the phone to the PC with the USB cable that's currently connected to our PC. Once you see this blue-green splash screen appear, you're going to want to press the volume up button, and that will take you to this screen here. Now, we're going to set the phone down to the side while keeping it plugged into the PC with that USB cable so that we can set up Odin. As we turn our attention to Odin, you're going to want to look in the logs window here and make sure that Odin says that your phone has been added. If you don't see that, go ahead and unplug the device and plug it back in. We want to make sure that the phone does say added. That means that the device is in download mode and that Odin is able to access it properly. And from here, we can begin to load in those firmware files. So we're going to click on the BL button right here. We're going to browse to where we have this firmware file. Find the firmware that begins with the letters BL and select it. Then we're going to click on CP and we're going to do the same. We're going to find the firmware file that begins with the letters CP. We're going to click on the CSC button here. And again, we're going to find the file that begins with the letters CSC. We're using CSC instead of home underscore CSC because we need to factory data reset the phone. And last up, we're going to click on the AP button. But instead of choosing the firmware file that begins with the letters AP, we're going to choose that Magisk underscore patched file that we copied from our phone. I have noticed that some people, their firmware download includes a user data file. That is not the case for my Galaxy S23, but if you notice that your firmware has a firmware file labeled user data at the front, then you'll want to add that to this slot here. If you don't have that file in your firmware, then we just leave it blank. So once we have at least four slots loaded in, you're ready to begin this process. And we're going to click on the Start button right here. Again, we have our Samsung Galaxy device set to the side. It's connected to the PC with that USB cable. And we don't need to touch it or mess with it in any way. We actually want to make sure that it maintains a stable, secure connection so that there aren't any issues with the images that are currently being transferred to it. So wait patiently, follow along with this progress bar here. You also have a progress bar on your phone itself. And we're just going to wait until Odin completes this process and we get a green pass message up here. And 
now. When you see this green pass message up here, you should also notice that your phone is going to reboot on its own. And you're going to notice that the phone's going to reboot a couple of times as it tries to boot you back into Android. It's not going to be able to. And you're going to get to this recovery screen here where it asks if you want to try again or do a factory data reset. So again, as I mentioned, we're going to need to do a factory data reset. So we select that option using the hardware buttons and we press the power button to select it. Use the volume buttons to highlight factory data reset and confirm that by pressing the power button. Our phone's going to reboot one last time. You're going to see this red text up here at the top and that's completely normal because we do have Magisk binaries installed on our device. Right now, we're just going to wait for the phone to reboot into One UI 7 that's based on Android 15. And this is going to take you to the Android activation screen. So let's go ahead and skip through all of this activation stuff. Once the phone has been set up and you are back into Android, look into your app drawer and check for a Magisk application. The icon will look different since it's just a stub of the Magisk app, but we just need to open it up. It's going to tell you that we want to upgrade to full Magisk, so tap on OK. You're then going to be told that you need to grant the permission to install apps. So after a little bit of time and after that APK file has been downloaded, and you may be told that you need to grant installation permission for that application. If not, we go ahead and open it up. You see that it's going to require additional setup, so we tap on OK. We're told that it's going to reboot in five seconds. We're just going to wait. Let our Samsung Galaxy device reboot. And that allows for Magisk to continue setting stuff up. Again, we're going to see this red text here since we're not on the official firmware anymore. And that's only because we have Magisk in the file system of Android. But as you can see, that boot isn't going to take long at all. We unlock the phone, dive back into the app drawer, and open up Magisk again. You can see here that we have version 29.0 installed. I even recommend that you download a free root checker app from the Google Play Store so that you can manually check and verify that you do have root access to One UI 7. So there's definitely a lot of moving parts here, but as long as you follow it along with me, you'll have a fully functional Samsung Galaxy smartphone or tablet with Magisk installed for root access. From here on out, you will need to manually install firmware updates with Odin or Heimdall, depending on which operating system that you use. And if you patch that AP file with Magisk, then load it into Odin instead of the stock AP file. And then you're going to use that home underscore CSC file instead of the regular CSC file. Then you'll have the latest update installed with root and you'll get to keep all of your data as well. I do plan on doing a video about this though, so if you're unsure about this process, then wait for that next video that I'll do here on the channel. But again, please let me know if you had any issues following this guide, and don't forget to give this video a like while also subscribing to the channel for more Android rooting content like this.